Okay, so welcome back. Now we, we are moving to pump station design. So pump station design, I divide into this topic into four uh, subtopic. This of consisting of force main design. So uh, uh, force main design. So how uh, force main actually is a, is a, is a pipe, uh, but this is a, this pipe is it's necessary because this pipe is the one who uh, the which uh, the this this pipe is the one which under pressure and also uh, transport the wastewater to uh, the other the charge point for example wastewater facility or the other main hole or the other main uh, sewer main <coughs> so that's why you know the total head total head of this uh, uh, force main uh, pipe is very important uh, Total head is lead to uh, total head lead to the capacity of the uh, the other pump. Uh, and then uh, after that, number two is the pump selection. So how to select the pump, and then uh, because the, there are several there's uh, there are several type of pump uh, exist in the market. So what should be the suitable uh, what should be the appropriate pump for the wastewater treatment wastewater, uh, for uh, for pumping the sewage and then as you know sewage is, is not like uh, it's not like uh, water uh, drinking water I mean the like surface water because sewage is consists of uh, solid particles solid particles so uh, the pump have should have the ability to uh, uh, to uh, to handle the those solid particles. Uh, that's why yes, uh, s there are uh, s a different type of pump that uh, we need to to be aware of. Number three is conventional pump station design. So, uh, uh, what should be the appropriate uh, 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 element inside the uh, station? And number four is a f uh, factory assemble uh, pump station. So uh, there are uh, some pump station that is uh, assembled at the factory. So these are the uh, this belong to this category. So usually conventional pump station design is uh, designed for the large flow. Uh, that those pump station sometimes the pump itself is uh, is is uh, it's a site. It's on site. Uh, uh, installation, uh, on-site configuration, you know, meaning that uh, the is a big one, the big size, so they have to. Uh, I mean, the factory have to design the the pump based on this uh, size. Uh, based on the 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 dimension of the the um, the layout of the station itself. And for the factory assembled pump station, usually it's a it's a pump it's a pump station that uh, used to handle uh, low flow, low amount of uh, discharge. <coughs> okay, so this is uh, the wastewater pump station. So as you can see here, <coughs> uh, this is the wastewater pump station. Uh, as uh, we already study, I think you familiar with this. Uh, uh, this is a conceptual model, uh, so meaning that the wastewater is collected from a residential area, and then they will come to uh, gravity lift flow to the uh, pump station, usually at the low low level here, and then after that, this low level will this pump, uh, this pump will uh, uh, transport the I mean have the ability to. Uh, convey the, uh, to convey the the wastewater the sewage to the other uh, discharge point I call it discharge point so discharge point can be wastewater treatment plant or it could be another main super main here okay so this one this line we call it force main so that's why the beginning of this uh, 
uh, subtopic we start with the uh, force main as you can see force main this is a pump this is the force main let's say this is the our discharge point so the pump uh, to this uh, this the the to design the pump is based on the head total head of of you know total head from from the success point here until uh, this uh, discharge point here so it's basically it's like some something here this one so this is the the total head so the total head is depend on the the length of the uh, the, the depend on the uh, the layout of this uh, sewer uh, force main so that's why we need to uh, design we need to understand the uh, force main first okay before we uh, move to the select select selecting move to select move to select the, the pump capacity okay so waste water uh, waste water pumping station so waste water pumping station are generally classified as one of the following uh, type we have wet well and uh, dry well can have the uh, wet well and dry well so sometimes this dry well is called it's a pump house actually wet well and dry well mostly it's like this this exists uh, side by side uh, they have uh, some uh, uh, barrier actually because uh, we have to because uh, wet well usually is a lot is a full of uh, sewage and sewage is this of uh, poisonous gas so that's why uh, they, they have some area between this wet well and dry well and dry well is a uh, is pump house it's a place that the pump is exists to pump the water from wet well and then we have a submersible pump <coughs> uh, we have a submersible uh, pumping station and uh, we have a suction lift and we have the screw pump okay so uh, for this topic we uh, we are uh <coughs> discussing only uh, the wet well dry well and submersible pump uh, submersible and uh, for the pump station design it include the uh, there are several elements for the pump station design for example force main design pump selection and station layout Okay, so that's why uh, our uh, topic will divide into force main design. So this is a uh, force main design. Already seen, already explained to you. This is force main design. <coughs> so force main is uh, once again force main is a pipe that uh, uh, force main is uh, the pipe design. To transport the sewage under pressure from the pump station to one of the following discharge point, okay, could be gravity sewer, could be storage tank, could be waste for a treatment plant. So these are the uh, you can imagine from the pump station, meaning that's the lower part, to the uh, higher part, which is can be gravity sewer. It could be. Uh, <coughs> storage tank or could be the waste for a treatment plant and then the internal pressure of the force main is usually the maximum uh, you know the internal pressure in the force main usually the maximum pressure is at the pump station this is the place that you uh, the pump is the push the water so this is the, m the highest pressure and this pressure decrease uh, to the lower to the low lower pressure means uh, almost like uh, nearly uh, atmospheric pressure uh, at the discharge point so once again this is uh, uh, the place where the water will, will be pumped so this is maximum pressure and this is this place where the uh, the sewage will be released at the discharge point so this is the less pressure so all equal to the atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure so the force main is uh, uh, integral part of the pump system, and it designed <coughs> uh, and design and the system ha head capacity curve are required uh, to the pump. 
so because this uh, force head as I said uh, this force main is a part of the uh, pump system pumping system so that's why the this uh, uh, system head so uh, I mean the uh, the total head of this uh, uh, force main is uh, very important for the system head capacity curve uh, for selecting so for selecting the pump. Okay, so force main design. For in the force main design, we are going to uh, discuss about the design equation. So what are the equation that we use in order to uh, calculate those uh, total head? And then force main velocity. So what should be the minimum and maximum velocity inside this force main? And then we have a pipe material. So what should be the uh, appropriate uh, material for pipe to handle this force main? And then depth of cover means that this what should be the uh, minimum depth of uh, the force main? Uh, and what should be the what are the element of the uh, force main, which is uh, Appurtenance uh, <coughs> Okay, so first of all we uh, Discuss about the equation. So this is the equation. So design equation the total energy required to deliver the water From the wet well to the discharge point at the which at the waste water treatment plant is commonly calculated in terms of equivalent elevation of water column. So so this is uh <coughs> TDH. So TDH is a total head total dynamic. So mm. is uh, the total uh, total head. Uh, sorry, please uh, make a amendment here. This should be the total head, or this is uh, the uh, total dynamic head. So this is total head or total dynamic head. And uh, HEN is uh, the intern loss, and the rest is in the table 3 6. So you can see the uh, terminology in the table 3 3 6 uh, for the rest of this. So this is uh, the, these are the, the, the total, I mean, this is the, the head that we need to find and then combine together to get the total head for the uh, for the selecting the for selecting the pump <coughs> and you can see here uh, HFS and here these two parameter HFS and HFD so HFF and HFD is a uh, is a friction loss okay so this is a friction loss uh, this is a friction loss along the pipe uh, sometimes we call it the, the major loss so this is the major loss the major loss we refer to the loss along the pipe horizontal uh, horizontal pipe so this one can be calculated based on the hazen William equation so this is the hazen William equation and then this head loss so the, uh, I mean this is the head loss uh, it's basically it's, uh, the parameter will be the Q the Q is uh, we already studied this one, so this is uh, the flow rate, <coughs> flow rate from the uh, inside the pipe, and this is the pipe length, and this is the diameter of pipe, and this is the uh, Hazen William equation uh, coefficient. So this one, uh, uh, this is a C is a coefficient that can be we can derive from we can uh, get from uh, table nineteen point. Nine, nine, 1907 okay so the hfs or hfd uh, this is the head loss and l is uh, uh, equivalent length of pipe in meter and the other term is in the table uh, 36 okay so so this is uh, the Suggested uh, has a William C value for the force main design. So this is uh, this is just only two. Okay, I mean uh, uh, that the iron pipe and uh, plastic pipe. So this is we have a new new pipe. In new pipe, the C will be the number one hundred and forty. And design here, I mean this is old pipe. 
it is like 120 and then we have plastic if you use plastic the new will be greater than uh, 150 and design new year uh, the old part will be 120 but actually you can find uh, the other this value in uh, in uh, the other in I think I in the other <coughs> there are many you just you just put a uh, Hazen Williams uh, C value for uh, <coughs> for sugar you will see that you will get the result it's a list of uh, table you can select from that but this is like a common one so new and old new pipe and old pipe okay so this is uh, the design uh, this is uh, the you know the installation of the pump they have two two uh, we will encounter two main uh, uh, configuration okay so two main configuration so this is we call it the negative suction head uh, 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 palm with the negative suction head and the palm with positive uh, suction head you can see these are the different these are different so this is uh, the the lowest uh, level of the uh, let's say this is you know this is the pump station and then this is the place where we uh, this is the place where the uh, the switch will be stored and this is the place where the pump will be will be placed and then this is the uh, the discharge point so in here uh, you can see this is the location of the pump and this is uh, the lower level of the <coughs> the lowest level of the uh, of the sewage of the sewage so if the pump is uh, greater than the low the lowest level of the sewage this is we call it negative suction head and if the pump is uh, below the, the below the <coughs> the uh, sewage water level so this is we call it uh, positive suction head so why we have to be concerned about this one you can see here the S start okay S start S start here so you can see S start here S start here is a static S static so meaning that this is the uh, the level between the highest level of the water inside the discharge point and the lowest level uh, this is the uh, okay let's say the average level of uh, waste water in the discharge point and the average level of the <coughs> inside the uh, this uh, uh, the place where the water will pump will be pumped so that's the this is uh, a start and this is the a start they are a little bit different yeah. okay so uh, this this is important uh, that you need to uh, realize uh, when you uh, design the pipe, uh, the pump, and then this is uh, the uh, the term terminology <coughs> uh, for those uh, you know in the equation itself here, and so from this uh, schematic diagram uh, too. So absolute head pressure is H A, energy grade line is uh, E A. EGL uh, feeding and valve losses. So this is uh, we are going to discuss this one. Next slide. Friction head loss. This is uh, we already discussed. So this is hydraulic grid line, and then <coughs> uh, uh, manometric uh, suction head, uh, manometric discharge head, manometric head, and this is net positive suction head available, net positive suction head required, etc. So. And uh, this is uh, the velocity head, <coughs> not here. The start, the start is total static, uh, static, static head. <coughs> <coughs> so this is uh, the the difference. Okay, so the for the fitting, fitting and valve losses are estimated using equation uh, three six. So this is uh, equation 3.6 uh, Okay, so this is the equation 3.6 uh, 
equation three six uh, we uh, this is uh, another word you may uh, familiar with it is we call it uh, minor losses minor losses which is referred to the loss at the fitting and what okay so uh, it's equal to k uh, v squared divided by 2g so k is an uh, energy loss coefficient you can get from the book that i showed you last time uh, appendix c or you can from get from this uh, table so depend different uh, <coughs> different fitting and warp <coughs> will have a different case. Okay, so we move to the force main velocity. <coughs> so force main velocity. So the force main velocity because the flow rate of sewer is uh, highly variable, particularly in the small district where night time flow rate will might be maybe zero. So the design criteria for main is uh, fundamentally based on the velocity. Okay, so uh, usually we we <coughs> we uh, calculate the force main based on the velocity inside this pipe. So the velocity should be greater uh, than 0 0.6 meter, greater or equal to 0 0.6 meter per second is required to prevent solid from setting out, setting out and greater from more than greater or equal to 1.1 meter per second is required required to request uh, to uh, request to uh, uh, to prevent deposited uh, to prevent uh, uh, deposited uh, uh, solid so this one it should be prevent Uh, deposited solid. So how do we know? You know, you have to from the <coughs> uh, from the wastewater itself. Before, first of all, you you do the uh, testing, right? You test the raw uh, sewage, and then if you find that that this is uh, it have only the solid uh, solid suspended so uh, maybe solid so. Maybe you can use this one, and then uh, this the solid is. Uh, if the solid is uh, like, uh, we have like a grease and grit. Yeah, like uh, grit. You know, grit like sand, particle, or gravel particle, etc. It's a lot. So you got to make sure that uh, maybe the velocity you have to increase from 0 0.6 to to 1.1. Okay, so the recommend, uh, recommended the minimum velocity is 1.1 for small or medium uh, size uh, station and uh, desirable velocity is uh, 1.5 meter per second. So for large pump station velocity from 0 0.7 to 1.5 meter are recommended. Okay, we move to pipe material depth of cover. So the pipe material, the uh, potential for you know we already studied about the pipe material so mostly the pipe material that we have to uh, to select is the material that doesn't uh, that doesn't have the potential of uh, ground corrosion you, you still remember ground corrosion right so this is the corrosion that uh, induced by caused by the uh, sulfuric acid which is coming coming from uh, uh, s s uh, hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen sulfide is come from uh, the s uh, sulfide which is uh, the uh, the element inside the wastewater after the those wastewater stagnant and uh, stagnant okay so especially when a pump, uh, the potential of ground corrosion, especially when pump is uh, in intermittent, must be considered in selecting the pipe material. So meaning that if we uh, design the pump, which is the pump is is uh, intermittent, meaning that like you have a leg time to to pump, meaning that you may wait for a while, uh, you may wait wait for a while, 
um, until the the uh, effective volume uh, reach. I mean, until the effective volume achieved, then the pump will be operated. <coughs> then you will to see that you will have a lag time. So lag time mean this is the time uh, that uh, the uh, sulfur uh, sulfate will be <coughs> sulfate will be uh, released and then it will become uh, hydrogen sulfide and then it will uh, uh, break down uh, into sulfuric acid by the uh, moisture and also um, the basically is coming from the oxygen and, and the moisture, I mean water <coughs> so uh, we have a like immediate time, uh, lag time so that's why you need to consider about the current corrosion so, uh, <coughs> if you have this ki this kind of problem, so select a proper material, a uh, pipe material that we have been that we did study in the previous session. So devo cover, so devo cover is uh, in comparison to the gravity sugar, the first main are lay at the uh, at uh, comparatively it's a shallow depth. So meaning that the first main usually it a little bit uh, uh, shallower than the gravity sugar so uh, the minimum cover of this uh, force force main should be 0 0.9 meter it's used to minimize the impact of life load <coughs> okay we move to the appurtenance so for the appurtenance uh, we have uh, mostly we uh, in uh, the pump station two main uh, appurtenance uh, is <coughs> available so one is a blow off valve and another one is air valve so blow off is a is this is the blow off blow off mean this is a, the this is water main okay so water come in so uh, blow off is referred to control uh, is a control outlet that permit the drain draining or flushing of pipe they may be found at long depression section they consist of a manhole and appropriate valve so this one is usually is uh, it exists at the end of the, the pipe to flush the water actually to flush the water because some of sometimes the water is uh, is too long so it uh, it be, uh, first of all it's too long and uh, sometimes it um uh, the the quality itself uh it's uh, we need to flush it uh, we need to flush it out we need to drain it out so uh, we usually uh, flush it at this uh, blow off area so it consists of manhole something like this like here is cast cased so uh, this is uh, the blow off and another one is the air valve. You can see here, this is the air valve. So the air valve is used to, at high point in the main uh, force main, to allow the trip, to allow the trip air. Okay, because uh, you know, when the f when the wastewater is flowing, it's no problem. But when you start for maintenance or start for replacing something or at the beginning of the operation, so you have the pipe is full of. Uh, the pipe will mix between uh, liquid and uh, air so uh, you know if you have this type of problem you will have a problem of the uh, cavitation so cavitation is like uh, you can s hear the sound cluck, 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 cluck inside the pipe so this is the cavitation so it can destroy uh, the equipment actually uh, destroy the pipe so in order to and also the efficiency of the uh, the water flow in the pipe is, is is not that great meaning that we cannot achieve the velocity and the charge that we uh, that we design so in order to uh, improve the condition we have to uh, install the air wall so the air wall is used at a high point in the force main to allow the trap air and other gas gases to be released so the gas bubble become trapped at the high point uh, because uh, intermittent pumping allows the release of the entrain and diesel gas. You can see. So this one is important if you plan.
you have the ambient uh, pumping uh, pumping condition so meaning that you you may have high possibility of uh, the bubble the gas the bubble mean the 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 the, uh, the accumulation of gas uh, from the atmosphere or the communication accumulation of gas from uh, wastewater itself because you have lag time and then so you need to install this uh, at the high point this uh, air valve at the high point okay so we move the pump selection so the pumps there is a selection the survey is commonly pumped usually uh, survey is commonly pumped using uh, specially designed uh, uh, centrifuge pump uh, and uh, ultra flow pump are not recommended for use with the untreated wastewater so you have to remember ultra flow pump is not recommended Show flow pump is, is not recommended uh, to be used uh, with uh, untreated wastewater. So only the two recommended uh, pump to be used. They have non-flogging, rapid flow pump, and mixed flow uh, pollute pump. So non-flogging rapid flow pump are designed to handle untreated wastewater, untreated wastewater, and the pump are able to passing a square at least eight millimeter in diameter and the pump suction and discharge opening uh, be at least uh, like 100 millimeter in diameter so this is the criteria for the non clock radial flow pump and for the mixed flow volume pump operate at high higher speed than radial, uh, radial flow non clogging pump they usually for usually of lighter construction mean you have lighter construction mean low cost and the size of the solid that pass a mix uh, mix flow pump is smaller than a com uh, than a com comparable uh, non clock radial flow pump so meaning that uh, if you use a mix flow volume pump uh, this the the speed is great the speed is good but the solid itself the solid that they can handle solid that they can handle is uh, less than uh, the non clock radio flow pump. So, uh, once again, it depends on the uh, your it depend on the your uh, test. Meaning, you test the raw wastewater. If you have like a lot of uh, you you have a lot of uh, solid, so it's not recommended to have to have like mixed flow volume pump. Uh, the pump shaft may be horizontal or vertical so the shaft or the you know the shaft shaft is like the core of the the, the pump it can be horizontal or vertical so usually the vertical pump are often prefer because of the space limitation so because when you do the when you use uh, the vertical pump you uh, you may have the platform uh, longer the length and you if you use the uh, vertical it's a small you have like smooth platform and then the pump itself is like a yeah, upside down okay so this is the, the pump selection so you can see this is the example of vertical shaft uh, for the non clock uh, this is a non clock pump non clock uh, non clock radio flow pump okay so this is what it look like and this is uh, the vertical shaft can see we stuck the sewage from here and then this is the outflow and then here the horizontal shaft you see that this is space that we require so this is the place that we suck the uh, the suck the uh, sewage and then this is the outflow and this is the like uh, internal uh, diagram of the uh, radio flow vertical and then this is a mixed flow volume pump so this is a mixed flow volume so mixed flow volume uh, it's uh, something like this so this is uh, the uh, the inflow meaning that this is the place that the pump is suck the sewage and then this is the outflow and this is the uh, profile of this pump and this is it called the shaft Mm-hmm. <coughs>
Okay, so we move to the conventional pump station design. So uh, the conventional pump station design, conventional pump station design require for large flow. It require for large flow. I mean that the flow is greater from than 0 0.2 cubic meters per second, or where the wastewater must be screened to protect the pump. Okay, so general feature when located in residual neighborhood the buildings in the building exterior should blend in with the character of the residential building meaning that you have a color uh, like uh, uh, green colors should have green color like like residential area or uh, the architects uh, the architects uh, architectural uh, building I mean architectural the design of the original building perhaps the uh, the pump station should have the the same architectural uh, design actual window openings are normally omitted to uh, increase security of the building door must be wide wide enough to remove and replace the equipment in light station uh, overhead bridge crane are provided uh, floor opening and hatch are provided for Moving equipment from lower, uh, lower floor. Uh, the ground floor must be set above the flat plane uh, of the surrounding area. In both structure and superstructure, the wet well and dry well must be isolated from each other. Uh, that's what I I say to you. Uh, they will be separated, and this isolation must be a vapor pipe. Means you have to prevent the vapor to ensure that the volatile and poisonous gas CH4 and H H2 H2S uh, methane gas and also uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, of uh, which is from an aerobic decomposition of the sewage cannot move from the wet well to the dry well so this is important okay so they cannot be at the same place uh, you have to isolate them Okay, so this is the conventional pump station. You can see this is ground floor. This is the ground floor engine generator, and then this is a wet well. Uh, <coughs> this is a wet well. Uh, this is a, the the go go down, and then this is the pumping uh, station. So this is the pumping station. Okay, so this is uh, the intermediate floor plane, and this is the basement floor, uh, basement plane. Okay, so you can see that. So this is a uh, uh, layout of uh, the pump station. Okay, wet well for the wet well. Uh, wet well to store the what is the purpose of wet well? Wet well is to store the wastewater and to provide the sufficient submergence of the pump suction and inlet, so to prevent the water from forming and the air entrainment that will cause a pump cavitation. As I said to you last time, cavitation when you hear the sound and clock 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 inside the pipe, so meaning that this is a cavitation. Uh, cavitation uh, condition, cavitation condition, meaning that it's a full of gas inside. So the space is often provided in the wet well for barrack to protect the pump from clogging. So if you have a barrack, so the barrack should be uh, the barrack shall be provided with pump handling wastewater that greater than the 750 meter. And the barrack spacing is uh, from 25 to 150 millimeter between bars. And it suggests that the distance between bar be one third the size of the maximum solid uh, diameter that the pump can pass. So one third. Okay, so this is a wet well. So this is a wet well, example of wet well. You can see here. So this is the sewage, and this is the inlet. Yeah, this is the inlet. And then uh, the inlet will flow, and then uh, move to this 
vertical pipe to uh, release the the velocity and then this is the suction valve this is low level and then the pump to the the other this one so this is the pumping uh, this is the uh, inflow pipe this is inflow pipe sorry this is outflow pipe coming from the pump inside here this one is to pump and then this is the inflow pipe uh, the effective volume of the wet well should be based on the design average flow and uh, a filling time not to exceed uh, 30 minutes so meaning that uh, we need the uh, effective volume because the pump need volume or the water so if insufficient uh, volume of water it will be sufficient volume of water is reported to this one you see that here is a low level so meaning that the amount of uh, I mean this amount of, of water here should be available all the time so this uh, amount of water it should be of course it's coming from the inflow and then the filling time should be not more than 30 minutes okay so not more than 30 minutes and the effective way to design the volume is to base it on the method of pump operation the suggested time between start is a function of the motor side so if you have a motor side so if you have motor what is the motor you can see the pump yeah this is the motor or the pump you see that every pump have motor this is the motor this is the pump actually the pump is here this is the pump this is the motor so the motor is the one electricity electricity and then connect to the motor motor will uh, move the, the shaft we rotate the shaft and then this fan will <coughs> move and then uh, we will suck the uh, the sewage so the motor itself is uh, if the motor is less than uh, 15 kilowatt uh, usually the starting uh, the starting time I mean uh, suggest time to start is uh, uh, 15 15 minutes so if the motor is 50 to 75 uh, kilowatt more than 50 minutes <coughs> if the motor is between 75 to 400 kilowatt really greater than uh, 20 to 30 minutes the volume of well wet well between start and stop elevation for a single pump or a single speed pump control step for the multiple speed operation is given by the volume is equal to QT divided by 4 so uh, <coughs> this uh, V is a uh, required uh, capacity <coughs> Q is the pump capacity cubic meter per minute cubic meter per, per minute uh, so or in combined of pumping capacity we had the uh, one pump is already operate and second pump is start or where pump speed is increased so this is the Q and T is the minimum time in minutes of one pump cycle time between successive start or change in speed of pump <coughs> <coughs> so for the conventional pump uh, design again Uh, the submersible uh, submergent depth are shown in table 19.8 okay so this is uh, the if you have a more velocity at uh, diameter uh, so if the uh, velocity is 0 0.6 meter per second so we have the required uh, submergent submergent depth is uh, 0 0.3 you know x so S is uh, we refer to the uh, this remember here. So sorry. So S is uh, here. Ah, yeah. Okay. This one. 
this is the x okay so x is uh, from here this is the suction point and then to the low water level okay so x is what lower so here so the required submersion depth at is this one so 0 0.6 3 heat velocity is 1 meter per second will be 0 0.6 uh, 1.5 will be 1 etc okay so this is uh, the norm that we have to follow okay driver or oh, this is pump house driver or pump house so this is the uh, i think you familiar with this picture from the previous uh, session so this is the pump house so this is the pump house so driver is referred to this section okay so this is wet well this is wet well and then this is dry well so basically it's a uh, it's, uh, it's pump house so it is uh, isolated or prevented by this wall you can see here this is actually this is one wall here uh, so it is placed in it is placed in a, a convenient place and pump are installed inside it its location should be such so, so that the pump can easily function any quick clearance around the pump and the motor should be provided to allow the crew uh, to work the recommended spacing is uh, from the wall okay 0 0.9 to 1.1 meter from all pipe and flank not just pump base and ventilation should be installed so ventilation in driver should be minimum of 15 air changes per hour if the fan operate intermittently and 6 air change changes per hour if they operate continuously so ventilation should be installed okay we move to the factory assembled pump station so the factory assembled pump station is known as uh, prefabricated uh, lift station so usually it is used for low flow and where the need to protect the pump from clogging with the breeze is minimal so there are three type of uh, this uh, factory assembled pump station uh, uh, or prefab pre prefab okay for the pre prefab pump station so there are three type of prefab pump station pneumatic injection dry pit and wet pit so in this uh, the uh, discussion we will focus on dry pit and wet pit and then pneumatic injection is you can find uh, the video from this uh, link uh, this is uh, the dry pit okay so this is dry pit it's basically is like it's just it's uh, similar to uh, wet well and dry well so this is the uh, this is it con consists of like wet well and consists of uh, dry well here okay. so this is the place that we put the, this is the place we pump uh, we place the pump and uh, pump the wastewater from here so this is dry pit pump station and wet pit pump station is something like this so this is uh, the this is the inflow okay well, so which is come from here and go into this well and then uh, after that the uh, submersible pump is here and then pump the wastewater to to this okay so this is the schematic uh, detail schematic diagram in here okay so this is inflow there is f1 sewer inflow here and then this is there are two main submersible pump and then after that the pump into this uh, effluent okay so dry pit station so the wet well that is part of this pump station is uh, an oversized manhole or pipe suction which is uh, sloped down <coughs> slope bottom the low water level elevation is set so that no air can enter the suction pipe uh, by the formation of the vortex by the formation of vortex the top of the pump volume must be below uh, the low water level of the wet the well, you can see, okay, this is lower level, okay, this is the level of the water, and the pump may have to be lower. And uh, the top of the pump uh, volume must be below the low water level of the wet well to avoid the air binding on the pump. The effective volume of the wet well is between the low and the high waste water level. It is estimated are using equation 192. Okay, so the effective volume K 
can be estimated by using this equation. How about the wet feed station? Wet feed station. Wet feed station is a station must be a steel factory assembled station, or it may be consist of the factory assembled farm and hardware installed in a convenient uh, conventional uh, concrete manhole. The effective volume of the wet well is between the low and high uh, wastewater level, and this is estimated by using the equation 922. Okay, so this is uh, the last part of this uh, discussion. So hint from the field. So to extend the life and make use of pump warranty, station with two pumps should be designed to operate the pump alternatively. These have the additional benefit to be evolved to side the wet well for half of the volume because the time between pump start will be double. So pump stations should be located to minimize the impact on the community. Consideration of funding and funding should be provided for landscaping, architectural conformity, conformity, noise control and order control. The facility must have appropriate safeguard for security. That's all for this uh, discussion and uh, the next card discussion will be uh, construction and maintenance of uh, sanitary uh, sewer. All right, so thank you for your time and then if you have any question, just uh, let me know uh, in the forum and I will try to reply your question as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Uh, and we still have the assignment too, so I'm going to upload the assignment too and explain in the next video.